my team has researched at length to make the explanation of infinity so interesting and easy that you will be excited to learn more about calculus. I don't really want you to wait long, but I want to make three bold statements before moving on. The first one, infinity is not a number, because for a number to exist, it must be measurable. Secondly, infinity is not hypothetical. It's very much real and exists around us. Thirdly, infinity has the reputation to be known as the biggest number. This is a wrong statement. Infinity can be something as extremely small like the way it can be something extremely big. To understand it, let's start with G. An apple falling downward picks up speed because it accelerates due to gravity. Let's show it graphically. The x-axis shows time and the y-axis shows the distance from top to bottom. The time versus distance curve looks like this. The curve is almost flat when the apple detaches from the tree and the curve drops down quickly as the apple approaches the ground. Why is it so? Because the speed of the apple at the start of the fall is zero and the apple keeps on gaining speed until it hits the ground. What's actually changing is speed. But what's changing in the graph? It is the curvature with which the distance versus time graph curves around. And this curvature is known as slope. So the slope represents change in distance with time, which is nothing but speed. If the speed variation reduces, the curve will become flatter and flatter till it becomes a perfectly straight line. This will happen only when the apple is falling with a constant speed. For the time being, let's assume the apple falls with a constant speed and the variation of distance with time is a straight line. This straight line along with x-axis and y-axis make it a right triangle. Right. Slope, or speed, is calculated as distance traveled upon time. Irrespective of scaling the size and position of right triangle, the value of slope remains the same. This is what we know at the first place, because we assumed the apple falls with a constant speed. If you want a more categorical understanding of slope, I recommend you watch this video on the basics of linear algebra where we learned the concept of slope thoroughly. The link to this video has been shared in the description box. Now let's get back to our original case where the distance versus time variation is a curve instead of a straight line. This is the case where the apple is changing its speed continuously and hence the curvature or slope changes likewise. Now the task is to measure the speed at any moment of time during the fall. That means we need to find the slope of the curve at that moment. But how will I do it? We don't have a right triangle like we had in the previous case, which is very much needed to find slope. All the mystery lies here. If we don't have one, we will create it. But how will we create a straight line from the curve? Until we get a straight line, we can't obtain the right triangle. And here comes infinity to our rescue. Yes, it is the infinity that helped Newton to find speed for such cases. Let's see how. Let's assume the time of fall is 100 milliseconds. We now cut down the time into half that means we're going from 0 to 50 milliseconds and then scale the graph to original dimensions. Now the curve looks a little less curvy. If we go again and half the time to 25 milliseconds, the curve looks even straighter. If we keep on doing this forever and reduce the time interval to a value that approaches 0, we can fairly assume the curve to be a perfectly straight line. 
notice that we take the time interval closer and closer to being equal to nothing, but it never becomes equal to nothing. Alternatively, we can say that the time interval becomes an infinitely small value and the curve approaches a straight line. Hence, in order to find speed at every single point on the curve, the time interval around that point must approach zero. Anything that reduces forever and approaches zero is the concept of something being infinitely small. On the other hand, anything that grows forever is the concept of something being infinitely large. Having said that, we have a few important observations to sum up. Firstly, infinity is a concept, not a number. It is the concept of something continuing endlessly. Secondly, infinity can be something that is infinitely small or infinitely large. Thirdly, infinity can be used to find the speed at different instants of time. In other words, the concept of infinity is used to find the change in speed from one instant to another. Not only is it used to find the change in speed, it is used extensively in all domains of math to measure the change. Whenever you talk of change, the role of infinity is inevitable, and this is the concept which led to the development of calculus. Apart from measuring the change in values, calculus has one more extensive application. Calculus is used to find the area under the curve, and again we see that it's not possible without the concept of infinity. The curve can be of any arbitrary shape, and what's the way out for finding the area under such curves? Let's treat the shape as a rectangle because it's so easy to find the area of the rectangle. However, this will give you an unwanted overhang and the area of this overhang is the error while calculating area under the curve. Next, we break down the rectangle into small rectangles and adjust the height of each rectangle to match it with the curve. Area of all these rectangles added together will give a better estimate of the area under the curve. However, still there are small overhangs that make our calculation inaccurate. Adding more rectangles will keep on reducing the overhang area and this will make the calculation more accurate with each addition. Does it make sense that adding the rectangles forever or reducing the width of each rectangle forever will bring the overhang area closer and closer to being equal to nothing? Will doing so not help us find the nearly perfect value of area under the curve? If your answer is yes, then congratulations for understanding the concept of calculus and infinity all together in one video. What are we doing here? We are making the width of each rectangle infinitely small, and these rectangles with infinitely small width help us to find the area under the curve. I really hope that this video helped you understand the logic of infinity and application of infinity in calculus. I am so keen to know your thoughts on calculus. Please comment in the description box how you felt studying calculus. I also recommend watching these videos on E, pi, and I, as these three numbers, along with infinity, will give you great insight to four fundamental pillars of math and physics. And don't forget to share this video with your loved ones, because sharing is caring. Thanks, and have a nice day.